Hi, I would just like to talk to you about how the FGFR2 receptor structure is critical for its function. Here we have the FGFR2 receptor embedded into the outer covering of the cell, known as the cell membrane, as you can see in blue here. So normally, when the FGF ligand binds, or in other words, the signal binds to the receptor, it causes activation into the intracellular portion of the cell, known as the tyrosine kinase domain, and this was previously discussed before in the text. So this initiates the intracellular processes linked to the receptor. If you think of this like an analogy between a mobile cell phone tower and a mobile, the cell tower sends the various signals and transduces it to the mobile, allowing it to the mobile to function correctly. However, mutations can arise in this receptor that alters the conformational structure or shape in other words. As a result, the FGF is no longer able to bind properly. It's logical to think that when a signal is unable to bind, the receptor function has completely stopped. But this is a special case where the opposite actually happens. The mutation in this case causes a continual activa activation of the receptor and any of the intracellular processes linked with it. Going back to the analogy, the signal that is transmitted from the cell tower reaches the antenna of the cell phone, but cannot enter because the antenna is broken. Now, without a correct signal giving certain instructions, the phone has a mind of its own, independent of the signal, and is essentially continually activated. Now, in terms of Cruzon syndrome, how does this actually relate to its symptoms? We know from earlier, the mutated form of the receptor is continually activated. So any function such as the formation of blood vessels, or specifically in regards to Cruzon syndrome, bone growth is elevated. Because of increased bone growth, there is premature fusion of certain skull bones, known as craniosyntosis. So as you can see here, there are certain sutures or connections here that generally fuse during early child growth. However, in this case, it happens prematurely. So this early fusion prevents the skull from growing normally and affects the shape of the head and the face. Many features of Cruzon syndrome result from this premature fusion. Hopefully, this has provided you with a quick rundown on how the structure of FGFR2 is critical for its function and that the mutations result in its continual activation as can be seen in Cruzon syndrome.